The global outbreak of coronavirus has raised concerns regarding the impact on regional and national food supply chains. Although COVID-19 is a health issue, its effects are being felt in other sectors of the economy such as security, business, food supply and livelihoods. The agricultural sector has been negatively affected in the key areas of food production and the supply chain for nutrient-rich foods. Deteriorating diets lead to poor nutrition, which in turn weakens the immune system and can jeopardize the body's ability to fight a COVID-19 infection. In response, the government of Kenya, through the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives, has developed measures to keep the agricultural sector and supply chain running smoothly. The Agri-Nutrition Department of the Ministry has been working closely with the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders to sensitize Kenyans on the integral role of nutrition in the fight against the pandemic. This is being done through the One Million Kitchen Gardens project that targets one million vulnerable households in rural and urban areas. So we are here today at uh, the Ministry of Agriculture uh, Kilimo House, uh, where we have the model uh, kitchen garden uh, demonstration site, where we set up all the technologies that uh, all households are able to adapt to, to be able to give them not only knowledge, but also be able to, you know, give them the instructions, you know, step-by-step -step guidance on how to set up these gardens. The ministry is promoting simple, space and water-efficient kitchen garden technologies, such as the cone garden, the multi-story garden, the micro garden, the tire garden, the moist bed garden, the weak irrigation garden, and the simple drip irrigation garden. This project has been engaging schools across Kenya to increase nutrition and health knowledge among students. Several school gardens have already been established, such as at Olympic Secondary School in Kibra. Here in the school, the students are learning about agriculture through this farming and we have what, what we call 4K crop and some students are doing agriculture as, as their exam in the form 4s. Olympic Secondary School also acts as a demonstration site for the surrounding community. With the scarcity of the space in Kibira, the surrounding people or the community from the Kibira, they come here in the school, we show them, we are, they are taught how, to, how they can use a small space to get something to eat. Adriano Ziambo, a Form 1 student at Olympic Secondary School, has greatly benefited from this initiative. He has not only learned how to grow vegetables, but also earns a few coins from working at the school's kitchen garden. Despite schools having closed down due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Adrian has been busy growing vegetables, fruits and spices. Niliamua na hii corona sisi kaa nyumbani tunakaa na tembea tu. Kwa na hii kazi ndio nasoma na kufanya kazi hapa kama kama nimelipo kidogo na vitabu na ndika notes. My friends are, are just making a call for me. And then you chase the game. In the summer, chase game, there is time for playing and time for keeping busy. Adrian is calling on other young people to take interest in agriculture. What's the way we can do this? We can do this. 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 We can the Ministry of Agriculture has helped us because I've got a, a, a more knowledge of which I've taken to our country in my KC land. So it is through the Ministry of Agriculture which gave me the knowledge and the knowledge I saw it better to take it to our country. Food insecurity is not only impacted by the quantity of food but also the quality of food. Through kitchen gardening, one is able to grow organic food that is free from synthetic chemicals or preservatives. Yeah. 
Sylvia, a resident of Ndeya, has been producing organic food for her family and also sells the surplus to her friends in the city. What drove me to actually start farming was my children. I wanted to be able to grow safe, nutritious food for them. So I started on half an acre and I started growing all the food that we're eating at home. And what had happened was that I told myself I'll never go to the market again. If I have half an acre, I can grow all the food that I require for my home. But I found on an half an acre, I actually had more than enough. And that's when I decided to start a business. And the business is called Sylvia's Basket. And I was selling food to my friends. Once a week, I would go around the farm uh, and just pick the excesses of what I had, put it in baskets and take it to my friends in the city. Simon Bogwa, a resident of Kitengela in Kajiado County, is also growing organic food using the hydroponic system of farming. We started now uh, growing some hydroponic vegetables just for our own consumption. So we started with uh, spinach, lettuce, uh, collard greens, kales, uh, coriander, then we went into tomatoes went into strawberries. So as you can see behind me now is our kitchen garden here in Kitengela. This area is uh, semi-arid. Water is, is scarce and uh, it's not a luxury. So the little water that you get uh, will be saline, mostly it will be quite saline, salty, uh, and also it is in short supply. Hydroponic systems use nutrient-enriched water instead of soil, thus there are few problems with pests, weeds and soil bone diseases. We decided to do it within the compound so that uh, you know, we could uh, keep ourselves busy, watch uh, them grow and also have a, a traceable source of food. Uh, you know, it's not grown using sewage water or you know, water that is not clean. The only guarantee that we can give uh, our population on, on, on food safety is only, you know, being able to grow your own food. That is the only sure guaranteed way of you eating the right food, I mean the safe food. And not only safe food, but also food that you've seen the processes of how it has, you know, been grown. If you know the sources of your water and such kind of a production guidance. <coughs> To improve diets, the State Department for Livestock is promoting the rearing of small livestock on small spaces in rural and peri-urban areas. Poultry, rabbits and small ruminants such as goats and sheep can significantly contribute to dietary diversity and nutritional outcomes through home consumption and income generation. Children and the youth also enjoy being involved in the raising of small livestock enterprises and serve as a learning point for them. Kitchen garden, most people tend to imagine that it's only vegetables. Kitchen garden is not complete if it doesn't have any livestock or even other small fru uh, fruit tree here and there. So the ideal animals in the kitchen garden are the small animals where we have uh, the dairy goat, we have the chicken, indigenous or you can even have a few layers and or broilers uh, we also have the the dairy goat and and the rabbits they give birth very fast they don't require a lot and you can even feed them from just the what you have on your farm farm residues even kitchen waste can feed chicken and you get your eggs and and uh, the eggs the milk and the meat Rabbits are a great source of highly nutritious white meat. They require minimal investment and space. Other important products from rabbits include fertilizer from urine and droppings. Rabbit urine contains nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium needed for healthy crop growth. We have the, the National uh, Rabbit Breeding and uh, Training Institute in Gong that uh, we are using it for breeding uh, the rabbits that we supply to farmers. We also have other four stations that uh, multiply the rabbits. We have one in uh, Kimose, which is in Paringo County. We have another one in Meru, uh, in Marimba Farm. 
Then we have another one in Matuga, in Kwale County. And these are our stations that we are multiplying the rapids to supply to the farmers. We also import uh, rapids to beef up our, our breeding uh, materials to improve and minimize uh, any breeding in the country. The ministry is working together with the National Rabbit Breeding and Training Institute in Gong to promote the production of rabbits and provision of rabbit production information to interested farmers. Uh, over the years, of the research, we have been able to come up with uh, six kind of rabbit that can be used for commercial rabbit rearing. And these are namely uh, New Zealand white, chinchilla, California white, Flemish giant, checkered giant, and the Dutch breeds. Those are the rabbit breeds that uh, we keep around and that have been researched and found to be commercially viable, to be used by our farmers. David Mwangi is one of the farmers who have embraced this initiative after receiving training on rabbit production. I went for training. First of all, I had the National Rabbit and Training Center do offer trainings uh, every so often in a year. So I registered for one in December 2018. We went there for three days, so I saw how they make their cages. And you will see back where I have some 22 cages that were metallic that I started with. So when, I, when it comes to rabbit, I say it's a scale insensitive business, which I would encourage anyone to do. I came to know about rabbit farming, which I really appreciate. I can practice my nursing and come back and feed the rabbits. It's only one hour for all these cages, even less than an hour for us to feed them. The white rabbits, they got so sweet meat and the bone to meat ratio. It has a lot of meat than the bones. Dairy goat rearing is very beneficial for households. A goat is a renewable provider of milk, manure and fiber and also provides meat and hide. Dairy goats are bred for milk production and more people are turning to goat milk due to increased awareness of its qualities. Bernard Karari, who is a resident of Kayole, is a dairy goat farmer. Despite having a small space, he has managed to keep at least three dairy goats that provide him with nutritious milk for home consumption and for sale. I decided to get in, to do the dairy goat farming here as a source of income, yeah, as a side hustle. I'm a community health assistant. And uh, after doing a, a research, I decided to cash on uh, the demand for goat milk in particular. It's in great demand. But after talking to other daily goat farmers, they recommended the Alpine, German Alpine, which produces, uh, which is a good producer of milk. Joyce Wanjiko or Mama Jimmy is also a happy dairy goat farmer. Her family enjoys a daily supply of fresh, nutritious goat milk. Nilionerea ikiwa mtu ikiwa, ikiwa kitu mzuri sana juu ukiwa huku nyumbani hauna shaba. Sasa nikaonelea kwamba juu mimi ni mfanyi kazi wa biashara ya hii sukuma ya, ya soko. Hiyo majani yenye na, natumia na iletea juu hiyo busi sio si haikuri chakula mingi. Rearing of chicken is highly suitable for vulnerable households. Products from chicken improve nutrition security by providing high-quality animal protein in form of eggs and meat. The State Department of Livestock is therefore enhancing the supply of day-old and month-old improved Kenyaji chicks to farmers. Caro is doing the breeding of the improved indigenous chicken. And the ministry is establishing two hatcheries. One is almost complete in Marimanti, uh, that is Trakaniti County. Uh, very soon we are going to start the production of day old chicks, which we are going to sell to the farmers to increase the production. Joseph Kamau is a Kienyeji chicken farmer. After retiring from the University of Nairobi 10 years ago, he managed to acquire a small piece of land in Gong Town on which he raised Kenyaji chicken for home consumption and for sale. Kwangu mimi nina bahati nina pahali kidogo uh, nimefungia kuku wangu uh, na sio kidogo vile naweza ku extend dio sababu nina hiyo 
idea ya kuzi multiply ukiweza kama mkulima uweze ku breed zako uh, inakuwa na manufaa ama unakuwa na faida Although COVID-19 does not affect fish, the fisheries sector has been subject to indirect impacts of the pandemic. To enhance food security and nutrition, the State Department for Fisheries, Aquaculture and Blue Economy is promoting the aquaponics technology to ensure there's a steady supply of fish. So you'll find that these kinds of uh, this kind of innovations where the, we have the simple uh, technology such as uh, aquaponics, you're able to grow not only a vegetable but also you're able to grow um, you know, fish where you have the excretions from the fish uh, kind of production acting as a source of nutrition for the vegetables in terms of manure for them to be able to, to grow in. This project is being implemented in currently 35 schools. We are working with learning institutions. We want to send a message to the youth that they can also grow fish and a crop in a very small area, basically in backyards. One of the partner schools is South Teto Girls High School in Mokoroine, Nyeri County. Uh, the students have greatly benefited with this technology, mainly because actually apart from teaching it theoretically, they are able to see what is actually happening practically. They are also doing it in the, in the greenhouse. So it has greatly benefited the students in making agriculture to be very interesting. And uh, actually we use the students in uh, feeding the fish. We are actually already ha are working on how to revive the 4K clubs once the kids are back fully uh, in schools. Uh, we have already developed for them the manuals on how to set up the 4K clubs and now we are gearing towards building the capacity of their teachers to be able to help them uh, form the 4K clubs back in schools. Professor Gideon Nyamasio, a retired lecturer at the Nairobi University, has been carrying out a research on urban fish farming at his home in Buruburu. I thought of starting the project in Nairobi with a view to starting, uh, setting up a system that people who are retired, who are idle, who are locked up because of the pandemic can actually occupy themselves and reduce and lower their stresses, stress levels. The project is entitled Development of a Sustainable uh, water uh, fish farming technology in urban area. It is called Sustainable Urban Orderless Fish Pond. Despite having a small front yard, Professor Gideon has managed to utilize the space available to set up an aquaponic system. He has also been sharing this knowledge to students and other urban dwellers. Space isn't going to increase. Therefore, the design is intended to be adaptable to any, design, any area of space available. These uh, technologies have actually taken in, into consideration those people who may not have you know, enough space. So you'll find that um, we have been able to highlight uh, if, it's, if, it's, uh, you know, if, if you have a balcony or a wall, there's a technology that you can be able to adopt for that kind of a, a setup. If you have some bit of a space, you, you can either have a multi-story garden or a, you know, a corn garden. You can have any technology, at least which are, uh, which are sensitive uh, to space. Nutrition is one of the primary aspects in today's lifestyle. During these difficult times, kitchen gardening will not only save you money but also provide you and your family with a sustainable supply of healthy, nutritious food. If we increase the supply of day-old chicks, if we increase the supply of the rabbits, if we increase the supply of um, the, the, the breeding uh, dairy coats, the farmers will access and in the near future we are going to be nutritionally secure. Majo ukikula vizuri hata homa ya kawaida wacha of corona. Hata homa ya kawaida hawezi kukudhuru ukiwa umeshiba. If each family can have a kind of a, a small backyard kitchen garden they will be able at least to jump going to the market at least twice per week and that means that that money has already been translated 
for other uses in, in, uh, in the family. So we are actually taking all uh, Kenyans who would be then interested to set up their, their own kitchen gardens or home-based gardens within the confines of their homes. We would then be able to you know, provide be it technical support, be it uh, technical and also uh, um, you know, input support to the families that may not afford uh, to, to buy for themselves.